So my name is Kathy Zhang, and today my topic is about serverless workflow. It doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, okay, going to use this. So how many of you have uh, attended the CNCF serverless work group intro session? Raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> just one, okay. Um, so uh, in that session, um, I gave a very brief introduction about serverless workflow. And this session, I'm going to deep dive into the um, serverless function workflow model. And then I'm going to use some example use cases to show how you can use this workflow model to describe your applications. After that, I will do a simple, a quick comparison of the CNCF function workflow versus the AWS step function, which is a, a, also a, um, another type of workflow um, model. And uh, of course, I'm going to provide some information link on existing service workflow service. Um, I think I'm going to recap a little bit on what I talked about in the intro session because not many people attended that session. So uh, why, do we, uh, why do we need a function workflow model? Uh, many serverless applications are not a simple function triggered by a simple event. Many serverless applications are usually composed of multiple steps of function execution. Functions at each step could be triggered by different events or different combination of events. And information may need to be passed from one function to the next function or from one step to the next step. And before service, uh, usually a developer's application is developed and uh, run on the, on the developer's own compute system or on the developer's own organization's compute system. With the introduction of serverless, the developer's work is reduced to just writing the function logic. And all the other work, such as managing the workflow and execution, scheduling, automatic scheduling on compute resources to host and run the functions, or you know, do auto-scaling, when there's a burst of events, and also do the information passing from the event to the function, or from one function to the next function, or from one step to the next step. All this work is handed over to the service platform. So in order for the service platform to know how to do all this, how to manage and control all this execution and schedule appropriate resources to host run your function, the application developer needs to give a workflow model description about your application to the service platform. So the, the goal of the CNCF uh, service work group is to come up with a generic model, a standard model for, for the application developer to describe your application so that when you are, so, not, so that whenever, uh, no matter which vendors service platform, your application will run. You do not need to rewrite it. You just write one model, one template. It will run on different vendors service platform. So this slide, uh, the right diagram shows uh, example on uh, workflow model. There are three key components. Um, the first one is a list of events that trigger the function execution. The second, is a list of states that build the workflow structure. And the third are functions associated with a state that executes the business logic. Of course, different application, you have different functions, you have different business logic, and that's your uh, the developer's job to write it. As to the list of events, there are many different types of um, events from service point of view. And these are just some example events. For example, if you store a file into a storage, that could be uh, counted as a storage event, 
which can trigger uh, a function to execute. A web request application event, HTTP event, a database access event, an email event, etc. There are six states in the workflow model. The first state is an event state. In this state, the workflow will wait for one or more events to happen, and then it's going to trigger one or more functions to execute. And those functions could execute in sequence or in parallel. And so the workflow model will provide primitives for you to specify you know, the event state and then whether the function should execute in sequence or in parallel, or what event will trigger those functions. The second state is an operation state. In this state, it means the workflow does not need to wait for any event to happen. It will just start execute one or more functions, either in parallel or in sequence. The third state is a switch state. In this state, the workflow will branch to different next state depending on the input parameter. So the input parameter, per parameter could be passed from the previous state or from the result of, a, of, of the previous function execution. And the fourth state is a delay state. So in this state, the workflow is going to um, wait for a predefined period of time and then transition to the next state. And there's a parallel state. In this state, the workflow is going to execute multiple states in parallel. So it's not multiple functions, it's multiple states. End state, of course, that means the workflow will end with either success or failure status. So for the functions, the workflow model provides directives for you to specify whether the functions will be executed in sequence or in parallel and also provides directives for you to specify the function retry. For example, you know, depending the, uh, the, the interval of the retry, how many times it should retry, etc. The workflow model also provides directives for you to specify how information should be passing and filtering from one state to the next state or from you know, on one function to the next function. So this slide shows a, a, a use case. Um, it shows a workflow specification for a burglary detection application. So this application workflow starts with an event state. And uh, this workflow can be triggered by either one of the two events. One is a motion event, the other is a door open event. So any one of these two events happens. The, work, the workflow will trigger the face recognition function to run. And that face recognition function could result in two, I mean, could produce two results. If the result is a family member, which means it's not a burglary uh, incidence, the workflow will transit to, will transit to end state, which ends the workflow. If the function result is a non-family member, the workflow will transition, transit to um, event state two. In this event state, the workflow will wait for the door open event to happen. When the door open event happens, the, uh, a function will be triggered to send a notification to the police department and to the homeowner. And then the workflow will transit to um, end state. So let's back up a little bit. In the event state one, the start state, if the door open event happens first, it will trigger, it will transition to event state three. And then at this event, at, at this event state, the workflow will wait for a motion event to happen. When motion event happens, it will trigger a face recognition function to run. And then similarly, you know, depending on the result, it either you know, end the workflow or it's going to transition to operation state. And in this operation state, it doesn't need to wait for any event to happen. It will just trigger a function to send, that function will send a notification to the police department and the homeowner and then transition to the end state. Of course, if there is a timeout, 
So there's a timeout uh, you can specify. If within that timeout, you did not receive the, uh, the motion event, the workflow will just end, transition to the end state. So now I'm going to um, dive into a little bit more on the, uh, how you can specify the state. So there are multiple parameters in for you to uh, specify the information associated with that state. The first is the state type, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, there's six state types: event state, operation state, switch state, etc. The second parameter specifies whether this state is a start state of the workflow or not, right? As we sh as shown in the previous diagram, some st one state is a, a start state, the other states are not the start state. There's only one start state in the workflow. And then there is a, you can specify an array of events and the fun event function combination. And the first parameter is an event expression. It is a Boolean expression of events. You can say when event one and event two both happen, and then some action or some function will be triggered. Or you can say when event one or event two happens, then some function will be triggered. And the timeout parameter allows to specify the timeout period waiting for the events. If within that timeout period nothing is received, the workflow will transition to end state. And then the action mode specifies you know, the, whether the function should be executed in sequence or in parallel. And the actions is you know, the place for you to specify a list of functions to be performed. And next state is the next state to transition to after all the functions are su successfully executed. So here is a, um, some um, shows how you can specify the function retry. Um, the function is the function. Uh, the function parameter is a function URN you can specify. Timeout is the amount of time to wait for the completion of the function. If that, if that, if it, you know, if the function doesn't return within the timeout, it's a timeout error. And then in the retry, you can specify the matching value for the retry, right? That will be some function response code, or it could be a timeout error code. And then there's the retry interval, and the max retry, maximum number of retries you would like the service platform to do for your function if some error happens. And of course, next state is you know the next state trans transition to when exceeding the max retry limit. And this diagram shows um, how you can specify the information passing and filtering. Um, so you can specify, uh, put a filter between an event and the state. So then that filter will apply to the event data to filter that information. You can also specify a filter uh, to filter the information from previous state to the current state, or from the uh, one function to the next function. Of course, you can also specify a filter from the current state to the next state. So these are all optional. You, you can specify whatever you like, or you, you don't need to specify anything. So now I'm going to give a, a, a few more uh, use cases to show how you can use um, the workflow model to describe those use cases. So this is a, a travel booking use case. Oh, by the way, all the use cases in, uh, you know, are a simplified version of the, the real use case. I just want to show you how you can use the workflow model. Um, this, work, this workflow was start with an event state. And when the travel booking request event is received, the workflow will be triggered to start to run. And then it will, the first function is going to uh, schedule resource to run it is a, a travel booking validation um, function. You do some validation of this booking, and then you are, that function is going to send a notification to the manager for approval. And then the workflow will transit to the um, event state two. At event state two, it's going to wait for a manager's response event, which is external event. And then when that event is received, it will trigger um, a function to interpret the response. If the response is a reject, then it's going to end. If the response is approval, the workflow will transition to operation state one. And in this state, you know, you specify you want this, 
you know, the, the serverless platform to execute three functions in sequence, in parallel. The first function is to check the price of airline one. The second function is to check the price of airline two. And third function is to check price of airline three. So after all these function returns, it's going to transition to operation state and also pass the information, the price information. And in this state, it's going to trigger a function to do the to compare the price and times, and then eventually you know book the ticket, and then it's going to transition to the end state. So this is a long application um, a use case, and um, it's a workflow specification for that long application. This workflow also start with an event state, and the, when the long app request event happens the workflow will be triggered to run. And then the a function uh, will be invoked to do a long application sanity check. Uh, like, you know, whether, um, what kind, whether the username, everything. And then if the, the checking pass, it's going to transition to operation state one. And in operation state one, it's going to trigger three functions to run in parallel. The first function is to check, do some background check, make sure you're not criminal or anything else. The second one is to do some credit history check to make sure you have good credit, good credit score. And the third function is to check the financial strength to make sure you have you know, enough, you know, um, enough pay, enough um, um, uh, the paycheck, or enough money to, for, for the loan. And then those functions is going to send their result to the manager. So after that, the, um, the workflow will transition to the event state two and wait for the manager's uh, approval, uh, the response. So when they receive the manager's response, it's going to do a interpret, uh, trigger a function to interpret the response. If the response is a rejection, it's going to end the workflow. If the response is approval, it's going to transition to the operation state two and in operation state two, it will trigger two functions to run in sequence. The first function is to prepare the long documents. And after that, after that function completes execution, it's going to trigger another function, which will send a notification to the customer, ask, tell him to, or her to sign the loan. And then after that, this operation state will the workflow will transition to end state. Okay, this is uh, um, the last use case. And this is a video streaming use case, a video streaming transcoding use case. And, and the workflow specification for this use case also start with an event state. When the video, uh, when the video upload to a storage, an event is triggered. And that event will trigger a function which will analyze the video file metadata to see like, you know, what kind of um, trans transcoder um, format it needs to, um, to do. And then the workflow is going to transition to the operation state one. And in that process, the information will need to be passed from the event state one to operation state one. That information including the um, encoding information returned from the first function. And this state is going to trigger three functions to run in parallel. The first function is to do MP4 transcoding. The second is to do HLS transcoding. And the third is to do dash transcoding. This is just an example. Sometimes you need to, you know, up to 14 different transcode, transcoding format. So this just shows three. And this transcoding um, function could take a long time to finish. So the workflow will transition to the next state, event state two, to wait for response from those transcoding service. And when it gets a response, it's going to invoke a function to publish the transcoding um, information and send it out to the user. And then it's going to transition to a switch state. And this switch state is going to see whether you know, it has received all the response or not. If not, it's going to look back to the event state two to wait for another uh, transcoding uh, service response. If all three transcoding service response have been received, 
then the fork flow is going to transition to the end state. So there are several um, benefits of um, breaking up application into a workflow. So here I just um, highlight um, the two key benefits. One is that you can see if you want, need to modify a function or to replace it with a, a, a new function, you can modify it without impacting the other functions or the other steps. And the second is your, it's very flexible for you to add a new step or new functions. And then you, know, you can enhance your application. So this slide shows that for the same transcoding, um, uh, video streaming transcoding service application, if you use AWS step function, how you are going to do it? Because AWS step function cannot receive events. So you have to break up and the previous, and this um, workflow involves you know, uh, handling events. So you have to break up the whole workflow into several step functions. And then use a lambda to connect the event to the step function because step function cannot handle events. So, so we can see that um, it is uh, more complicated than using just one CNCF service workflow model to describe your to describe the same application. Also, because the whole workflow is broken up into three step functions. If information needs to be passed from one step function to the next step, next step function, as a user, you have to manually coordinate this. So you have to save your, in your previous step function, you have to save the information to some dynamo DB, and then the next step function, you have to retrieve that information. So we can see that you know, um, if using a step function, you have to configure multiple lambda function, multiple step function, and manually coordinate the information passing. But your CNCF workflow, you do not need to do all this. Just one for workflow model, one workflow uh, template. So here are some information links. Um, the first link is uh, um, the CNCF workflow spec. We already output the first draft. Um, we welcome more people to join this effort. You know, if you have any questions or you feel this workflow model cannot satisfy your um, use cases, yeah, please come and then um, to post your questions or to create issues. And then we will work with you together to address that. And we have weekly um, work group meetings and uh, um, I think in, in my previous uh, the intro session, we show that link. And the, they are currently, you know, um, they, they are two, uh, as far as I know, there are two um, services that provide uh, this workflow uh, service. One is Huawei has a service called Function Graph, and Amazon has Step Functions. And I know <laughs> there's a function uh, composition, which actually is also a workflow, right? I think this company has it. That's all. Um, now I'm open to questions. Thank you.